Hello everybody and welcome to FM Scout, I'm Mischievous Rogue and welcome back to Experiment Saturday. Today's video, we're going to look at what if Italian clubs had a 10 year transfer ban. Before we do that, like the pointing direction of my channel, Mischievous Rogue, we've got a mixture of let's plays, experiments, if you want to check that out after this, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Let's dive straight into the episode. So as we did in the English transfer ban video, we're going to start for the very lowest league, lowest playable league, move away up, see what teams and what division, if there's any shakes, any upsets, any teams that really shouldn't be there, but they are because of the transfer ban. Then we look at the comparison between the trophy winners from the transfer ban and the no transfer ban, uh, have a look how teams did in Europe, and then finish off looking at the Italian team, see if it's any stronger by the teams not being allowed to make transfers and have to rely on youth coming through as their sort of foreign players get sold or get older. So let's start off then with Lega Pro Girona C. As you can see there, I was looking through some of the teams. I love Italian football. I've always loved Italian football. I used to watch it on a Sunday as a kid. And it used to excite me so much. I don't think it's exciting anymore as much as it used to be because Juve are just dominating everything. But yeah, some of the team names bring everything back. It's fantastic. And in here, you've got a couple of uh, Serie B stalwarts. You've got Avellino down in the sort of Girona C, which is not good for them either. And you've also got Benvenuto Calcio. There are Serie B stalwarts in 2016-17 and have been relegated, relegated ever since. So they're down here and they really should be getting back up. Obviously, you've got the crazy playoff system in Italy as well. And relegated down has been Syracuse, Aversa, Normana and Palmese. So let's move on to Girona B. Again, a few names that bring back some memories here. Ascoli, Fondi, Ancona. Uh, teams that I like, and there's a little team in there with no badge, Racing Roma. So they've obviously started out uh, back in the day down in the Eselenza division, moved their way up, Serie D, and then for a nice roll through the Liga Pros, C, A, B, and sort of steady in there now. So they've came, they're one surprise team in there, uh, Racing Roma, but a few other teams, Siena's in there, uh, Grosseto, and yeah, some good, good teams in there, and it's a, a 10 points as well, won a league by 10 points, so obviously uh, Ascoli were promoted. So Lega Pro, Girona A, Reggiana as well, another team from my youth, uh, Vicenza, one of my favourite players, Marco Negri played for Vicenza, Cremonese, Prato, Cittadella, Venezia, Padova, avoided relegation, so relegated there was F Feral Pisalo. Uh, Lucchese, Libertas and Piacenza, another name from the past. And Reggiana, obviously, the champions there going up. I really, yeah, the crazy playoff system in Italy is absolutely mental. Definitely a challenging save if you want to jump into the Italian leagues. Okay, Serie B now. Uh, obviously, each league gets on crazy sponsorship as well. Eurobet for this league and obviously Tim for Serie A. But again, names for the past that should be in the division. You get Hellas Verona, Bari um, and Calcio are all up. But in this division, Bologna, Crotone, Juve, Stabia, Livorno, Novara, Carpe, Spezia, Lecce, Perugia, Trapani, Alpino Leffe, Cesena, Como, Taranto, Parma. So this is a team I love in this game. So obviously had the financial troubles, etc. And then 15-16 down to Serie D. And then they've slowly made their way back up now through uh, Girona B. So that promoted again. Now they're in Serie B, they get relegated again, back up. So, nice couple of seasons in uh, Serie B and they're obviously surviving just. And again, if you want to dig into the rules about the crazy relegation, there's a certain, if 18th place is so many points ahead of 19th place, then there's like a play out, it's called. As you can see here, Bassano and Parma. So, Parma won the play out which means they didn't drop in there. So I think it's five points. In fact, let's just have a look. Yeah, if you've never seen Italian football, the rules, it's absolutely mental. So uh, there you go. So bottom three teams are relegated to Liga Pro if fewer than five points separate 18th and 19th. Bottom four teams are relegated if more than four points separate. And obviously with this, there was only two points. So yeah, that had to be a play out, which is absolutely mental. Right, let's look at the big league now, Serie A. Well, Roma are the dominating champions by goal difference. Then it's Lazio, Juve, Inter, Fiorentina, AC Milan, Palermo, Atalanta, Napoli, Empoli, Torino, Pescara, Sassuolo, Genoa, uh, Chievo, Verona, Calgary, Vercelli, 
So Vercelli are the only club that's sort of out of place a little bit, not too much. I've, I've never actually heard of them. Again, I've been following Italian football for a while, but they're sort of Serie B stalwarts. Been moving up and down, sort of steady middle table finishes. And then he got promoted in 2019-20, relegated the next season, stayed in Serie B, and then moved, promoted again, relegated, promoted. So they've been had an up and down couple of years, but they're now again in there because goal difference first of all but they obviously had the uh, did they ever play out in this one let's have a look relegation bottom three teams are relegated so no play out for Serie A this time so relegated was obviously Sampdoria Saltarina Udinese which is a shock uh, one of my favourite players De Natalia played for them absolutely fantastic again if my pronunciations are wrong it's the Scottish accent uh, try my hardest here but yeah De Natalia uh, one of my favourite players, absolutely phenomenal. So that's where everybody is in the leagues. If you like Italian football, then you probably know a bit more than me where people you think should be. But you can see that the top goal scorer there, Moise Keane, fantastic wonder kid. I have him in my Rangers save. Phenomenal. 36 caps, 16 goals. His stats are absolutely brilliant. He just he matures and grows so fast. Uh, and he basically gets picked for the Italian team when he's roughly about 20 years old, 240k a week. He's getting £15,000 a week at Rangers for me. No chance I could pay him that, but brilliant player. Definitely the standout player in the Italian leagues. And if you can get him as a youngster, brilliant. So what we're going to do now then is we need to look at the trophies. The Coppa Italia, or the Tim Cup, uh, the Super Coppa and Serie A. And see who won it over the last 10 years compared to the no transfer ban seasons. So we start with Serie A. You can see on the left hand side is the transfer ban winners, and then the other side the no transfer ban. So you can see the no transfer ban as expected. Juventus absolutely dominate Italian football when they've got free will to spend money, sign players, etc. But when the shoes on the other foot and they don't have any money to spend and they have to rely on youth, it's actually Roma that dominate. So Juventus still won it three times. But Roma won it four times, AC Milan, Napoli and Lazio breaking up the monopoly of those two teams. But it's good to see Roma getting in there and big uh, Totti retired in 2018. What a legend. So good uh, results for Roma. Uh, it's good to see other teams winning it as well, especially a wee win for AC Milan. But let's move on to the Coppa Italia. Well, as I said... Before, no transfer ban again, Juventus dominated the cup competition. There was a, a win in there for Lazio, Udinese, Roma, AC Milan, but Juve with the most wins in the no transfer ban side. A bit different than the transfer ban side though. Obviously, Torino, AC Milan, Napoli, Lazio, Roma, Lazio winning again, AC Milan, Sampdoria, Palermo, Fiorentina. So, good mix of teams, all getting a shot to win a trophy and sort of mixing it up and spreading the love for the trophies around Italy so one more trophy to look at then and that's the Supercoppa Juventus no transfer ban there's absolutely no shock there domination total domination uh, but again they still dominate the transfer ban side but it is broken up by Lazio Napoli and Torino uh, but Juventus all conquering when they've got free will as I said before but it is good to see other teams especially smaller teams like Torino winning trophies so what we we'll look at now then is after we've looked at these the transfer ban no transfer ban we've seen how that affects the trophy side let's see how italian clubs get on now in europe it affected the english clubs the, i think only arsenal won a european trophy i think it was the uefa cup so will italian clubs have a mark on champions league or the uefa cup let's have a look so starting with the Champions League, you can see that apart from being a runners-up in 2016-17 for Juventus, it's pretty much the Bayern Munich and Paris Saint-Germain show. So obviously Barcelona, Bayern, Barcelona, two Bayern wins, then two PSG wins, a Chelsea and a Man City, and finishing up with a PSG. The runners-up, pretty much the same thing. The odd Tottenham thrown in there, but... No mark for Italian clubs. The transfer ban has definitely affected the performance as usually you would expect a few teams from Italy to either win it or be in the final. Let's have a look at Europa League. Juve, they break the mould. They won it in 2019-20. There's a few English clubs. First three trophies there. Man U, Liverpool, Tottenham. Three years in a row for English clubs in the Europa League. Um, broken up by Juve and Sevilla. And then again, Liverpool and Arsenal. Broken up by Dortmund and a Man U win. Monaco. So English teams benefiting from Italian clubs not being able to sign any players. And same goes for the runners-up. There's a couple of English teams in there. 
German teams, Spanish teams, but not a lot of Italian action. So you can see that it's definitely affected the European performance, which is quite right as well because everybody else gets to spend money. Italian clubs don't, they've got to re rely on youth. It's going to take time to come through. So there we go, that's the European bit done. What we're going to do now is go back to the leagues, look at the award winners before we concentrate the last part of the video on to see how the Italian team gets on. Right, we'll circle back round now, we're in the awards and you can see that starting with the goalkeeper of the year, there's loads of awards in Italy, especially in Serie A, most you just get player of the year etc, this has got absolutely everything, defender, defender of the year, midfield of the year, so the main man is obviously Alisson from AS Roma, broken up by Graziano and uh, Lilai, obviously before that was Buffon, sort of four years in a row and he's won it a couple of times before that as well, so that's the goalkeeper of the year. Obviously, runner-up, Lilai, and regen god Mariani. Defender of the year, Rugani, DeMarco, and then pretty much Bonucci, who's retired now. But look at that. He's absolutely dominated it for almost... Uh, how many seasons is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Almost 10 seasons. Absolutely phenomenal. So, Rugani still in there at 31-year-old. Midfield of the year, uh, regen this time. And then you've got... I'm going to attempt to pronounce that guy for 2024-25, but Felipe Anderson, Salah, Anderson again, Salah, Salah again, and then Jao Murillo from Inter, so good mix of other players apart from the winners of the league. Striker of the year, Moise Keane, one of my favourite players, and then Maisto, Higain before that, Zapata, and then pretty much Diabola, who's just actually moved, I think, yeah, to Manchester City for two seconds, £82 million. Pounds. Un Unbelievable. So he always goes for big transfer fees. So that's strike of the year. Foreign player of the year. Savage. There's that crazy guy again. I'll go for it. Nokuri. Savage. Salah. Anderson. Higain. Salah. Higain. Higain's absolutely fantastic. Yalmari and Higain again. Foreign player of the year. The Italian media's player of the year. Moise Keane. Mosti. Who's a regen. Luca Andre. Castello. Giorgino. Benucci. Bonaventura. He's retired as well, and you still get Rugani in there. Di Natale, oh, there he is, one of my favourite players. So, big break in the awards between 2009-10 and 16-17. Club of the Year, Fiorentina, Verona, Palermo, Sassudo, Verona, Roma, Empoli, Roma, Bologna and Crotone. Before that, it was obviously dominated by Juventus. Fair play, Club of the Year. So, the least dirtiest team Genoa, Roma, Palermo three years in a row, uh, Pescara, Empoli, Genoa and Pescara again. Loving all these awards, I wish so English and Scottish football had a lot more awards. Uh, fans player of the year, Savage, he's won quite a few awards. There's no no Kukri, no Curi again, Lucandri, Bonucci, Anderson, Diabla, Florenzi, Higain, uh, Bonucci, Diabla. So the fa it's pretty much the same guys all the time for the foreign player and the play the fans player of the year. It's almost the same. Uh, set up, same guys. Manager of the year, the Roma boss has won the most almost, Jardim, but Ranieri had a wee short stint as Roma boss there, but Allegri, four years in a row, Benitez at Napoli, Coco, uh, Ramon Diaz at Lazio. Managers, managers, manager of the year, so all the managers were voted. So it was Allegri, Ranieri, Valverde, Jardim, Coco, Diaz, Jardim almost follows the same pattern as the manager of the year. The actual Serie A player of the year, Regen, uh, then no, no Kukri. There he is. I do apologise for butchering your name, big man. No Kuri. Anderson, Bonucci, and then it was dominated by Diabla. He's some player, Diabla. Here we go. I'm not going to look at referee of the year. Top goal scorer. Here we go. Moise Keane, 29 goals. Fantastic. Maestro, Bucarelli, Zapata, Diabla, Higain, Bellotti, Higain again. Baca, who's retired now, Bellotti. And then we're pretty much getting there now with all the regen starting to come through. So that's all the awards. Some good good spots there. Good to see names like, missing names like Del Piero and Ibrahimovic on there. But Moise Keane definitely won for the future. So has he had an effect on the Italian team? Has this transfer ban had an effect on the Italian team? Will we win a trophy? When I sim the 10 years uh, with a trans without a transfer ban, Italy still didn't win a European Championship, International League or a World Cup. Hopefully, 
they potentially have done it this time because the transfer ban might bring through more youth, more Italian players. We'll see. Let's have a look. The Italian national team, managed currently by Allegri, the 58-year-old. He's the third manager now, and since this game obviously started the 10 years, they've had a good run at 10th, 11th in the rankings, little dips here and there. You see they had a massive dip in 24 down to 26th place. Uh, then they shot back up to 11th, little dips again to the 20th, and then they sort of rode it to 11th, and then they've been hitting sort of 14th, 13th all the way, and they're now currently sitting 13th in the world. Uh, all the major transfers are from Italian clubs to other clubs. And believe it or not, I've seen a couple of players from Fiorentina and AC Milan going to Queen of the South and Falkirk in Scotland. Absolutely mental. And Rangers and Celtic have also signed a couple of players from uh, Fiorentina and Inter. Um, you can see that major uh, clubs, Roma, Juventus, Lazio, Napoli, AC Milan, Inter, we've seen on the transfer ban experiment in England that this changes now and again. You usually get the top four clubs, Man U, Man City, Arsenal, etc. But with the transfer ban, the, the clubs not being able to buy players, these major clubs change. Top players, Donnarumma plays for PSG, Romagnoli plays for Arsenal, Pesardo, Chelsea, Rugani, Juventus, Mandragora plays for Tottenham, and Angeletti plays for Barcelona. So you can see that the only one of the top players plays in Italy, and that's Rugani. That's because Juventus is a loyal player, etc. Right, let's have a quick look at the managers that they've had. So Ventura, four years for three days, retired. Then Ranieri had a short stint, almost two years. And then Allegri, currently been there for three years and 346 days. Competitions, did they win anything? The Euros, quarterfinals, penalties, uh, 2016, 20 they lost to Switzerland in the quarterfinal, Germany, quarterfinal 2024. World Cup, 18 they lost second round to France on penalties, to Egypt, second round on penalties, and the cuts of the second round to Belgium again. Did they win any international leagues? Yes, they lifted the international league in 2018-19 after beating Spain. So at least they won something. But that's the way. That's the way it goes. So nothing's really affected it. Same as England, they've got slightly better. But I was still expecting them to appear in maybe a semi-final or a final. So it's not the best um, performance in the world. But the transfer ban. Never know, another 10 years and they might actually be quite good. So let's have a quick look at the squad. Top cap player, Donnarumma. Rugani's in there with 100. Romagnoli, Benassa. And it's... I'll quick look at all the clubs here. you get three Roma players. Bergamo. Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Bergamo player. Atletico Madrid, a Celtic player in there. Again, Celtic seem to be all saying these internationals. They had a lot of players in England set up as well. Chelsea, Barcelona, Genoa, Inter, Juve. It's very strange to see the Italian team so full of foreign sort of players at foreign teams. Top rated player, uh, Maestro, Pesado, Moise Keane, 37 million. Vignato Angeletti, top goal scorer as Moise Keane. Youth appearances, Moise Keane as well. So, yeah, that's where we're at with the top team. Let's have a quick look at the under 21s, and that's dominated by. The youth coming through now. One Newcastle player in there. So loads of Italian youth in there. That's at least something. Under 20s. Again, mostly Italian teams. Which is fantastic. And then loads of youth again coming through. And they're there. And the under 19s, which is good. So top team, all the players have started to be transferred out. And you can see the youth in the under 19s, 20s and 21s will eventually come through. And hopefully make Italy a better team but that's the experiment unlucky that Italy never won anything and um, due to the transfer ban I thought they'd do a bit better uh, next we're going to cover the Bundesliga It'd be nice if you could check that out as well and let me know down below in the comments if you want to see any other top leagues i.e. Spain France Holland or an obscure league you know I've done Scotland on my channel but maybe somebody wants to see Sweden let me know. Don't forget to check out FM Scout for all your tactics, guides, face packs, you name it, they've got it. Great website, I use that for my channel as well. And thank you for tuning in the video. It's been a pleasure and we'll see you next time.